So what I want to start with before we get into the oil news, I want to actually show you guys where the oil news makes an impact for us as Forex traders. Now, the reason for the impact and how impactful it will be is not always guaranteed. It's not always going to be the same. But one pair or one currency that you can always look to whenever there's oil news to see if something's shaken up is CAD, the Canadian dollar. So if I flip you over, I want to read to you first this Bloomberg piece. It says, the deal reached over the weekend by OPEC, which is a committee of countries that are agreeing to try to control the price of oil and its allies to increase monthly supplies to 400,000 barrels a day. This reduces the risk of an inflationary oil price spike. So they're trying to basically prevent oil from going to $200 a barrel, right? Right now, if you were to look, West Texas oil is at 69, UK oil at $71. It says West Texas intermediate for August delivery traded below $70 a barrel this morning, as I just said. Strategists see the deal leading to some short-term price weakness as investors unwind bullish positions. Go back a year ago, oil was almost zero. So people have been buying oil. Traders have been trading the future price of oil in a very bullish direction for months. It says here, while the deal reached over the weekend spans more than a year, it remains flexible with the Alliance continuing their monthly meetings from September. If we go to investing.com, they also published a piece this morning about it. They said oil prices fell sharply Monday after OPEC overcame internal divisions and agreed to boost output. This sparks concerns about a crude surplus as COVID-19 infections rise in many countries. Now, what could happen, just one thing real quick, is if Oil continues to be produced at a high level, but countries shut down because of uh, whatever variant we're on now. I don't even know what Greek letter they've named it, but whatever variant it may be with COVID, if they shut down and then we have a surplus, that could lead to oil price moving very erratically. It goes on to say, OPEC ministers agreed on Sunday to increase oil supply from August to cool prices that this month hit their highest level in more than two years as the global economy recovers from the pandemic. So oil is trying to make a comeback, a big comeback after that shutdown last March. It says the group of members of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, and allies such as Russia also agreed to new production shares from May for, or excuse me, from May 2022. Quote, longer term free and additional production capacities from OPEC countries are the key reason why we see oil moving again. We remain confident that the oil market is in the final phase of its upcycle. However, Goldman Sachs said that it remains bullish on the outlook for oil and the agreement was in line with its view that producers should focus on maintaining a tight physical market, all the while guiding for higher future capacity and disincentivizing competing investments. OPEC last year cut output by a record 10 million barrels per day amid an evaporation in demand. Remember, because no ships were moving, no cruises were moving, no planes were moving, no trucks were moving, nothing. Prompting a collapse in prices with U.S. oil future prices at one point falling into the negative territory, as I just mentioned. OPEC producers have gradually eased their output curbs, which now stand at around 5.8 million barrels per day. Quote here, even with the higher output, the market remains relatively tight. High frequency data is showing encouraging signs for oil, with U.S. gasoline demand hitting a record high. This should limit the duration of the selling. So to me, what they're trying to say is that as people come out of the lockdown and drive more and travel more, that will actually balance itself out with the current levels of production. That's what they're trying to figure out. What is that level of production that they need to maintain barrels per day in order to not have the shifting supply and demand on the retail side of the oil impact that price in a negative way, either causing oil prices to spike or to drop again. If anything, you would probably see them spike now. So if we flip back over and we look at the chart, I want to go to EuroCAD first, just to show you what it did last night. I'm going to erase the TDI because it's not necessary. Here's the average daily range, 85 pips, as you can see. From the market open Sunday evening, this thing has now not only moved the 85 pips, it's actually moved 1.3% today at most, 197 pips. So more than double what it moves on an average day. So when we wake up in the morning and we come to trade any of these pairs, we see this oil news, we see the reaction on price here by EuroCAD. For me, 
One of the simple things that I can do is just pay attention to average daily range. If it's already moved twice, more than twice what it moves on a normal day, does it make sense for me to go in and look for risk reward there? More times than not, the answer is going to be no, because it's already made its move. It could chop sideways. It could reverse back down. That would be forecasting to try to anticipate what it will do. But I think you have to just acknowledge the fact that it's moved what it normally moves on an average day, and it's driven by news. And that fundamental news that drives this type of movement, to me, is something I actually got into Forex to avoid. If you guys have seen any of the videos where I talk about why I got into Forex trading, I hate news. I hate rumors. I hate uh, you know, outside market forces that can come in and impact price action, especially in Forex where it's one of the most technically driven markets. So when we wake up and we see erratic movement here on EuroCAD, and we also can see it here on GBPCAD, we see these CAD quote pairs moving to the upside because they're showing weakness in the Canadian dollar. If you were to go to USD CAD, for example, this also moving higher, showing that CAD quote pair weakness. If we go to CAD CHF, what are you going to see? The opposite, a CAD base pair moving lower, weakness in the Canadian dollar. CAD CHF moves 45 pips on an average day, and now today it's actually moved 101. So it's more than double. This is 1.3%. This normally doesn't even move 1% in a day. Normally it moves about 0.6% in a day. So you're seeing these accelerated moves. To me, it makes a lot more sense to let the fundamentals do what they will. We could come in tomorrow and use these news events to create trend that could carry all week once we find better average daily range, better technical setups. But sometimes these news events can really be the catalyst for market volatility. And I'm a big believer in not chasing volatility at all. It, it almost is a turnoff and it should be to you if you're a technically driven trader like me. And that's why the CAD news is important. Now, like I said at the beginning of this little clip, how that oil news impacts these pairs is always going to be slightly different. For example, we have U.S. oil inventory numbers that come out every Thursday. That doesn't shake up the market as much. No matter where those numbers are, unless they're way out of the ballpark, that doesn't shake the market like this did. So it's important to just understand anytime you hear oil, 